welcome back to another video. If you haven't been here before, then check out some of my previous videos. Click the subscribe button if you want to see some more and uh, give me some feedback in the comment section and click that like if you want. Okay, so the important thing uh, is just pretty much like a lot of other, a lot of you guys who are probably watching, 2020 was a year where um, there was so much uncertainty and events were getting postponed, moved to later in the season and then just flat out cancelled for the year and then they were, especially when it comes to like Ironman events, just reissuing an entry for the year after. So for me, I had quite a lot of, um, I had quite a big year plan last year. So a lot of what I planned to do last season has just been rolled over to this season. Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad thing. It just set me, it meant I had less um, control over what events I was going to do. One of the big events that I was going to do was 70.3 Staffordshire. Um, and although it's not the only target for this season, one of the targets is to sort of try and see how close I could get to gaining a professional license. And without a pro field at Staffordshire, that event becomes a bit null. Um, that with it being postponed from June to July and a week before one of my other big events of this season uh, I've decided to not race Staffordshire for this year. Yeah, as I said, if you guys are doing any of the events drop them in the in the section below Especially if you've done an event that I haven't done if you can give me any tips tricks I know that Triathlon Dan has done some uh, course previews for a few of the events I'm doing so go and check them out. I'm hoping he's gonna do a couple more with a bit more detail um, but I might be able to talk him into that. So, I'm going to get the laptop. Um, just purely because dates and events and stuff and I'll end up missing something. So it's much easier just to have that in front of me. Um, and then I can run you through my events. So, what I've actually picked to do is on the 22nd, or it might be the 21st. Anyway, the, the weekend of the 22nd of May, I'm going to be racing uh, a sprint triathlon at Eton Dorney. Um, <clears throat> I've actually only raced a couple of, well, to be honest, I've only ever raced, I think, less than two handfuls worth of triathlon. I think I'm on about seven triathlons in total. Um, so I've only ever done um, a one sprint event here in Swansea. So that'll, that'll be an interesting one to do. Um, all of my training is completely tiered towards middle and long distance. So trying to really condense that down into a sprint is going to be interesting but what I really wanted to do to start the season off was just have the opportunity to do swim, bike, run in that order, make loads of mistakes in transition um, just to really sort of shock the body because I raced once last year, I raced like three times a year before that and a couple of times a year before that and I really do not have experience in triathlon and I think that's the important thing is that um, I've kind of thrown myself in at the deep end a little bit. So I, I really need to learn these lessons. So that event, middle of May, middle end of May, Eton, Dorney, sprint triathlon, 750 swim, 21K on the bike and a 5K run. So it would be perfect to make some mistakes, um, but also just test, test the body, just ask it to go hard for an hour and just see what happens. Okay, so then the first big event I have of the year is Outlaw Half in Nottingham on the 20th of June. Um, this one is an event I haven't done before. I have been to the site in Nottingham to watch other outlaw events, but it's one that really excite me, excites me. There's always a really, really good field. Um, always tends to have a couple of professionals t like turn up in the past. We've had Will Clark break the course record there. I think it's 352 or 351, something, something pretty quick for, for that course. Um, but yeah, really looking forward to testing myself in that first event of the year. There's some other YouTubers such as Harry, who's down to race, uh, Trap on Dan, go be there, um, and a few others. So it'd be really good to, to have a good hit out to start the season over a middle distance event. My next event then is Outlaw Holcomb, which is two weeks after. Um, again, Outlaw run event, and it's one that um, I've heard the course is really, really nice. The bike is nice and flat, um, and then the run is around the estate, which apparently is beautiful. So. Yeah, looking forward to that. So I'm stacking that sort of beginning of the season with a hit out at Eton, followed by sort of two middle distance, which are going to have um, at least a sort of top tier age group race and quite possibly quite a few professionals dropping in and out, especially with 
their racing being so scarce across Europe at the moment, I'd be shocked to see if some of those outlaw events do, do not get like a, a handful of pros turn up to them just to get a hit out. Um, and then that leads me to, I guess, my first, my big A race of the season, which is on the 24th, 25th, that weekend in the end of July. Um, and that is Outlaw Full, again, back at Nottingham. Um, this is the race that actually got me interested in triathlon. So my dad competed it in 2017 and 2018, and I went there to watch both years. Um, in 2017, I'd never done a triathlon, never thought of done, doing a triathlon. Thought he was stupid, crazy, whatever you want to say when he was doing a full distance race. Uh, it was going to take him, I think it took him like 13 hours that day. And it must have sowed the seed because about 12 months later I was then doing my first triathlon. And within two years from that I was then doing Ironman Wales. So um, it definitely sowed a seed. Um, especially because I've now been so intrigued by the event that I've now entered it myself. So yeah, really looking forward to Outlaw Full. The thing that appealed to me was that my only other Ironman distance event I've done is Ironman Wells, which took um, sort of slower than you would expect for an, like an iron distance race because of how difficult the train is. The bike is stupidly hilly and then the run course has like 500 meters of elevation as well. So something that really appeals to me at Outlaw is that it is a faster, flatter course. So it should be quite considerably quicker than, than Ironman Wales was. It is on British roads still, so there is that element of potholes, bumps, bumpy roads, and you're not ever moving quite as smooth as some of the European uh, destinations you can do on Ironman. But um, yeah, really looking forward to that. That's my first big A race of the season. So my first three sort of big events are all outlaw based. Um, that's actually the, ref the only outlaw ones I'm going to be doing this season unless things drastically south um, and I might try and see if I can sneak an entry for one of the events later in the season but they are some great events I did Outlaw X last year and if you haven't seen that video please go back and watch that video because that is a awesome event and, and one that I hope to do again in the future so after Outlaw Full um, I've thrown in a kind of it's kind of like a maybe event so that is um, in Aberfeldy, I, I probably said that wrong, it's, which is the British Middle Distance Race in on the 21st of August. Um, and the reason I've trapped this event in is purely because I don't know how the first few races of the season are going to go. One of my goals for the season is to try and see if I can get close to the professional license. Aberfeldy, a bit like um, a couple of the Outlaw races, has that gateway criteria to the event. So I put it in there on the schedule to basically if I, if I feel like I need to have another race, if I've recovered well from Outlaw Full in July, um, I've kind of got it there to have a bit of a hit out if I need a hit out. Um, but we'll wait and see. It's basically down to how the season goes. I would, if the body recovers well from Outlaw Full and I'm not feeling the effects of that sort of 10 days on, which I did when I did Ironman Wales, if I, re if I can bounce back much quicker, because I've got that like sort of almost two years of experience past that now. It's one that I, I would like to do because I've heard it's a re again a really beautiful location and a great event. Okay, so this is where um, it gets a little bit more complicated but also a bit more um, obviously exciting. So the, my main goal for last season was the Ironman World Championships in Kona. Um, that is still the goal for this year. So that is going to take place on the 10th of October in Hawaii as long as travel is allowed, as long as there's no quarantine rules and all this sort of other stuff. Um, hopefully both vaccinations would have been had by then um, and everything at the moment is making it look like it's going to go ahead and the advice that I always give to athletes and the advice I give to myself as well is You've got to train as if an event's going to take place until someone tells you it doesn't because there will be nothing worse than being at the start line and being that person that's just thinking back and just having that negative mindset of, oh, I wish I knew this was on definitely or I wish I'd done that session or I wish I had really committed earlier. Um, if you commit and the, the event gets cancelled, you're never going to look back and be sort of sad about it. You, you, you put that work in, you've become a better athlete Yes, it could be slightly wasted as in you don't get an opportunity to show that fitness, 
but you're always banking that in terms of your um, your progression in the sport. You're, you're never losing that completely. So I think it's important just to, to have that positive mindset towards it. Before that though, in September, there is a race in Tenby called Ironman Wales, which my dad is gonna be taking part in, which a couple of athletes I coach are taking part in that event. Um, and a lot of people, uh, friends and local athletes as well. So that is an event I want to watch. The only thing that's gonna be interesting is that I'm meant to be racing 70.3 Luxembourg the day before. So that's 70.3 uh, Luxembourg is on the 11th of September. Ironman Wells is on the 12th. My plan is to race Luxembourg and try and get back to then support my dad at Ironman Wells. I'm not sure if it's gonna be possible or not. So there is a bit of a question mark over it. In terms of Luxembourg, that is just gonna be a nice little hit out in terms of my build towards Kona. It's gonna be in that final, I think it's about five, I think it's five weeks out. So it will be during the final build. So it won't be rested going into that event. But again, so new to triathlon that actually, if I can go through the season and do like five more triathlons before I get to Kona, I'm gonna have that like, I'm gonna have much more experience than I had before. I think the problem is, even with these middle distance races, is I am still very much sort of a newbie. So what is my goals for the season then? Um, as you can see, my, my racing is very much dictated around the A races being full distance. So I've got the outdoor full in July and then Kona in October. The lofty, the lofty goals are to try and see if I can get within um, or get close enough to try and get that professional criteria. But if that doesn't happen, it's not a, it's not necessarily a failure of a season. If I am good enough to race professionally, I will hit that criteria, and I believe that. So I think um, it's just about making this more improvements. If I can do it this year, then great. If not, then it's kind of gauge where I'm at and then try and take it a step on next year. When it comes to like Ironman uh, Kona, the World Championships in October, um, I'll probably do a separate video on my sort of aims, aims and objectives there. One of the things I'd always ambition to do is try and get close to or break that course record for the swim. With the lockdowns and the lack of swimming, um, I'm not sure if that's too far off this year. There is still like six months to go, so um, if I can get back in and get going then it's, it might still be a possibility, but we're going to have to sort of play that as I go. But yeah, I really want to be able to go to Kona and enjoy it but race it and i think if you if i can try and race it if i explode i explode if i have a really good day i have a really good day i think i don't want to go to kona just to enjoy it pay, play reserved take part i want to try and go and race which some may say is stupid but i think that's just my mindset is i if i'm going to do something i want to try and give it my all um so that's what I will be doing, but definitely we'll do a bigger breakdown of Kona when I'm doing the build up for that. So yeah, full steam ahead. Might be chucking in a few little uh, local TTs with the um, cycling club. Again, if any of you are doing any of the events, especially if you've done, um, if you've been to Kona in the past, if you've done any of the Outlaw Branded events, please drop your um, experiences, opinions uh, in the in the section below. And also, if you're gonna do any of those events this year, I'd really love to hear from you and hopefully we'll be able to see you on race day. Cheers for watching the video and I'll see you soon.